Junk Tech has come out with a new smart shunt. This smart shunt is going to monitor the power going in and out of your battery. Now to say that I like the Junk Tech smart shunt is an understatement. I love the Junk Tech smart shunt. I've been using them for years now. I've had one in my grow watt setup behind me off in the distance uh, for another setup that I'm going to be building. I have one right here in my hand that I pulled out of my golf cart. I use one for my battery testing in all my battery test videos. I have their newest version here up on the wall and I just want to take you all through it and show you what it can do. So right off the bat I just connected to the smart shunt via Bluetooth and I can see that I already have a low capacity reminder. I did just do a capacity test on this Power Queen 12 volt battery and it is at a low state of charge and the shunt has already recognized it. So if we look here at the app I'm going to click on the 11 0.42 volts. Now this is going to allow me to set a voltage range that's going to be displayed. So this is a 12 volt battery. I'm going to put it at 14 volts as my upper voltage and my lower voltage I'm going to put, oh I can't see that anymore so I'll move that over. I'm going to put that at 10 volts because this is going to be my upper and lower voltage Actually, let's put that, yeah, let's put that at uh, 14. So there you go. Now you can see we have a detailed view of our voltage range. Now for our amperage, um, this battery here, I'm only ever going to maybe get close to 100 amps. On this setup, maybe not even because I don't have the appropriate gauged wire. This is just a quick setup to show you guys everything in this app. Uh, we have amp hours remaining. Now I haven't synced this up, so I haven't discharged and charged. So this is just an approximate guess. Um, once I actually sync everything, then it's gonna show the appropriate amp hours remaining. Uh, we have a power consumption in watts. This is gonna give us a power consumption in and out, as well as we have a charging energy. So this is only gonna keep track of the charging current and then the discharge energy. And actually we have a discharge energy here now, which I'm gonna clear. Yeah, I'm gonna clear it because I was testing this shunt a little earlier. So now we have no discharge energy. We have a temperature sensor that plugs into this and I'm gonna show you something neat that you can do with this. You can actually set low temperature charging protection with this shunt and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Our estimated time, so once we start a discharge, then it's going to estimate how much time for the current draw. Uh, we can go over here and we have, we can turn on our historical data. So what this is going to do, it's going to keep in the memory of the smart shunt and not just on your phone. Some of the other shunts out there, only when you're connected to your phone will it actually keep historical data. So that is really neat that you can do that. And we can actually export the curves in like, um, I believe an Excel format. So. We go over here to settings. Now this is really cool. So we can change our temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I'm gonna leave mine in Celsius because I'm up here in an igloo. Our effective amp hours, so this is a 100 amp hour battery. I have it set. Uh, current amp hour percentage, we're at zero. This battery is fully discharged. Data recorded in an Excel file. Our protections, which I'm gonna click on in a minute. Uh, advanced settings. So we can set like a full voltage a full current, we can set all these different, we can even uh, zero our current memory, so let's do that now. Can set a, an address, so you could potentially connect this to a solar assistant type setup, I haven't played with that yet. Detection time, and uh, reset factory settings, firmware update. Uh, this I was trying to do earlier and I couldn't get anything, so there's no, there's nothing to click on there. So I think we're at the latest firmware anyways. This product did just come out. So now setting protections, this is really cool. So you can set up a relay um, to trigger during certain events. So you can have over voltage protection, under voltage protection, discharge current protection, charging over current protection, over power protection, over temperature protection, low temperature protection, which I have this wired up for that right now. Uh, low capacity reminder. So this phone will actually send, this app, sorry, will actually send you a notification. So let's say at 20%. It says an error and then if you click again, it works. So you gotta double click. 
So at 20%, my phone is going to give me a notification uh, saying that we are at 20%, yada, yada, yada. Uh, protection recovery time. So if you trigger something, the low voltage, low temperature, over temperature, recovery time is once you get back into the safe zone, then it's going to pick back up and open up the relay and allow current to run. Um, and then protection time delay. So I've set both of these to one second, uh, just for ease of use of this video. And then relay mode, so we can set it either normally closed or normally open. Um, right now, I have it set to normally open. So I believe, not sure which one that is. I'm gonna leave it there. We're gonna do a low temperature event and see what happens. So I have the GoPro on the red light. When that red light goes off, the relay is no longer connected, it's disconnected. And then I'm gonna have the phone up on the screen as well, which is going to show the amount of temperature, or not the amount, but the temperature. I have a cold pack here, so I'm gonna freeze the temperature probe. And I have a bench power supply here to fake solar power. Currently outside, it's raining, it's dark, it's doom, it's gloomy. Um, I'm not gonna get any sun from outside right now. So I'm gonna fake it with a um, bench power supply. Okay, give it a few minutes. The uh, solar charge controller is now producing power. So you can see there we have uh, amps coming in is six amps. And we have a positive of six amps. So let's now change the temperature. We're gonna stick that in there. And you can see almost instantly the temperature is starting to go down. I believe I had it set to one degree. So once we hit one degree, uh, it should cut the uh, power coming in, which is gonna stop the solar. Okay, and we're getting close to... And there you go. We have, uh, we've stopped charging. So I've just low temperature protected this battery through a smart shunt. So that's pretty neat. Now let's warm this back up. So now it's engaged. You can see the lights come on, but we need a couple of seconds for the MPPT solar charge controller to start mapping before it, uh, and there you go. So now we've reconnected with the solar charge controller and we are charging again. So pretty amazing that, you know, a smart shunt can be set up in order to cut charging during different events. If you need to route this display up to the cabin or wherever, you can do that. And also it's actually meant to be set into um, whatever you're mounting to. I just use longer screws just for demonstration. Now this is the shunt portion. So in the older models, they actually didn't have a cover to cover this part of the shunt. And it's really nice that they now have actually made this portion here to go over top to protect your lug connections, which is really great. And there we go. It's on and it's not coming off. Now I'm going to take it off and leave it off for the rest of this talking point. So to connect this is rather simple. You connect your positive. This is gonna run power to power the unit as well as give you a voltage, a voltage sensing wire. So that is just gonna run off and go over to your battery positive. And then our negative is gonna come from the shunt itself. So that is gonna power the device and the screen. Why did that go off? Oh, you know what? Oh, that's why it was off. It's not that it wasn't plugged in. It is because you can actually set, let's go into that right now. So if we look here, you can set calendar, um, you can set your language, your sound, your unit of temperature, amp hours. We have a bunch of different settings here. So screen off. Right now I have it set to a minute, so I'm just gonna go to zero. And that way this is not gonna shut off for this duration of this video content. Now I have had questions on the older models. Um, so for the newer model, this is it right here. And this isn't a touch screen. Okay, so we are set on that front. So yeah, you can set a bunch of different things right here on the display. 
You can also set them on your phone. Um, anyways, back to wiring. So this is the included wire. This just goes right from the shunt into this device, and that is gonna power it. Now what you can do is that's all you need to hook up. If you do not need to hook up a relay, that is it. You just need to hook up the positive, hook up the shunt and this wire. And on the back of this unit, there's a selector switch for two watts or three watts. Two watts is gonna run in that configuration. If you wanna run a relay, you need to put it in three watts and you need to supply your own power supply into this port here. It goes through all of it on the directions. Um, but for me, instead of using a separate power supply, I wired it up to use the battery as the power supply to supply the relay as well. And then the way I have it hooked up is I have the solar coming in, the positive wire comes to the number two leg on this relay and the number one then runs into the solar charge controller, which then converts it and then runs it out into the battery. So this relay, if I have a cold temperature event, is going to stop charging. It's going to cut solar to the solar uh, charge controller, which in fact is going to stop charging. So I now have low temperature protection. Pretty neat. Give this a look. I'll leave links in the description below. And like I said, it's a great product. So enjoy. Thanks. Bye.